In this video, we're going to focus on one of the viewers' questions regarding to how we can create a hover effect for the cursor. So the moment we hover over a specific bar, you can see the mouse cursor changes. And if you hover away from it, or mouse out, you can see here then it changes as well. So as you can see here, it works nicely. So how can we do this? Well, let's figure out right now. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers' questions, which is how to change the mouse cursor on Hoover on bars in Chart.js. And this is a quite nice question, a quite suitable question as well. And this question came from one of my other videos, which is related to how to add an image on top of multiple data sets in the bar chart, which is quite interesting. And in here, the question came from Daniel Leandro, so a special thank you to Daniel for asking this question. And this is what Daniel has asked. Is there a way that we can change the pointer of the mouse when hover on the bars? Yes, there is a way. I'm going to show this because this specific question would probably be very interesting if you create here on this specific video about creating clickable bars in the bar chart. And this one here, you create a link and having a pointer on that would be very, very appropriate. So how to do this? Well, first of all, we're going to get the default code here. Let's go to chartjs3.com getting started. And don't mind this. For some reason, Google Chrome is giving me an error, I even even on Vue.js, so I don't know why. However, it is completely safe. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this chunk of code. And if you want to understand what this code does, please check out this specific video here that explains it all. So we're going to paste this code and in here, I'm going to cut out this title and then I'm going to paste it in here and save that and refresh. There we are. So now we have our code ready or our bar chart. Beautiful. So what we want to do now is first of all, understand how we can start to create a, a pointer or different cursor when we hover over this here to do this. We need to understand when we are basically hovering on a specific bar like this. As you can see here, the tooltip is being triggered in the same structure or same level. And that's what we're going to explore right now. So to do this, luckily it's quite easy. All we need is a specific function that is already built in, in Chart.js. So here in the options, you're going to do the following. I'm going to say here on hover. And basically with the on hover, we can then trigger a hover event. And what we will say here, we're going to say here, we need two specific parameters, the event parameter and the chart element. And this is a specific function. So we use here the arrow function and then in here, curly braces. So what we want to do here is basically the following. We want to figure out if we hover over it, are we on top of a specific bar? Yes or no. And if we are not, you will see the difference, of course, that the tooltip will show if there is, and if it's not, the tooltip the two will hide. So this same methodology can be used for cursors. Basically, when you hover over it, it will recognize here, and then we must trigger a change of the mouse cursor. So what we're going to do here is very simple. We're going to say here, first of all, if statement to just check here what's going on. And all what I really want to do here is the following. Or we would, what we can do maybe even beginning is just do a console log, just to check. What do we see if we say event? And secondly, a console log, what do we see if we have here chart element? So let's put a comma here, make sure we have this, semicolons here, and save this. So once we do this, refresh, and open up the console log or the developer tab. You can see here, we're already hovering over it. We see a lot of information. I realize that we get maybe too much. I'm going to hide one of them first. Let's refresh. Then we hover over it. All right. And then we can see here, we will see always our pixel coordinates. However, this one here, the event itself is not really the information we want to get. We want to get the chart element information. So if I save this here, refresh, we can see here now, here our array is equal to none. Maybe there's no length in here, means there's nothing. But if we hover over, let's refresh one more time. If I hover over here, you can see now it recognizes an array here. As you can see here, and if I go here back, it's empty. 
And then if I go here to the purple, you can see here now we have something. We go here, green, and then so this here is the information we need we need to have. And basically, when we hover over a specific bar, we only have one specific uh, data set value or index, just index of whatever the item is. So there's only one item here. So this is the length equals to one because we're going to get array value zero, which means that there's one value recognized. So this is very important information for us. So what we're going to do here is just an if statement. And with this if statement, we are going to say the following. You can get here the chart element. And then we say here dot length. And if the length equals one, like here, you can see here length equals one. And if it's none here, length equals zero, meaning no value or no array value is available when we hover. So once we have that, then we can say here a specific item. What we could do here maybe is very simple. We can put this one in here. I'm going to hide this here now and save that. If we refresh here now, you can see here now we hover over here on the white space, nothing happens. We hover here, it recognizes if we hover here again, it recognizes, but then here, white space, nothing happens. If we go down here, nothing happens. And there we are. So you can see here, if we over here, and there, and there, and there, you can see it does all kinds of things. So this is basically what we need. So now we have this knowledge. How can we now start to pinpoint or adjust here the specific cursor? Well, basically for this, we're going to use here a certain item where we need to have the event. So we're going to do this. I'm going to show you here now. We're going to start digging deeper into the event. So if I save this here and refresh, go over here. Let's start to look here. We can see a certain amount of information here. And eventually we need to go here somewhere in, let's see if it's available or visible. And most likely it is, yes, native. That's the one we need. So here in the native, we can dig more deeper. And then eventually we're going here down you'll find here the target. So the target is basically this specific canvas, as you can see here. And if we go in here, and you will see here then, we can do here specific style. We have to go to the S. Uh, do we see the style? I know I don't see any style. All right, so that's all right. What we're going to do is we're just going to put it in there because we're digging already quite deep. So we went here from event. We go to native and then dot target. So let's save this now and refresh and let's see if we go in here. All right, now we get this here. So now basically we are in here and I realize style, of course, is not being shown in here. Why? It's a CSS, but we remember in JavaScript, we can reassign CSS or we can assign CSS code as long as we say dot style. So we say yeah, dot style, of course. And then what are we going to pinpoint? Well, the answer is simple. We say dot cursor. That's the one we want. And then here, we will just say, well, or let's save this first and let's see, refresh. If I hover over it here, you can see right now there's nothing, so most likely it's a default. So what I'm going to do here, it's the following, we can say here cursor, I'm going to grab this. We say your cursor will be equal to pointer. So we have the nice clickable hand. So if I save this now, refresh, let's look at it, there you are, and look at the mouse right now, the cursor, as adjusted, but there's an issue here. Let's refresh one more time. You can see here, the moment I'm still in the white space, all right, but the moment I hit the bar, it becomes a cursor. However, when I leave it, what's going on, it maintains, it doesn't undo the item. So how can we do this? Well, let me show you as well. We have this one here, and if you already figured out, we have here the if statement is equals to one. So what would happen if it's equal to zero. So what we're going to do here, of course, the exact same methodology here. And then we have this one, we're going to copy this. We put in here, and then we just say here, I want to go back to default, save, refresh. Go back here. Oh, let's see what's going on. Of course, sorry. The reason why here, because remember, this one should be zero. So we're going to save here. So if it is zero or no, no value, Default, if there is a value, uh, value or if you hover over a bar, in that case, pointer. Save this, refresh, and let's look here. All right, and there we are. So now we have this here. So we have this chunk of code, and this works down nicely. I don't want to end it yet, because what I want to do now is I want to minimize this. 
I explained to you in a very elaborate way how to do it. So now let's do a one liner here. Because basically we can cut this code into one single line here. I'm going to show you right now. So all we have to do, and this is just more and more advanced way of doing it. And the more concise you are, the better. But if you're new to it or you don't want to, if you are struggling with understanding it, being this sometimes can be better because it explains it in terms that is easy to understand for most people. So what we're going to do now is going to do a very professional one way or professional way in one liner. So we do this here, basically we're going to grab this entire code and this entire code we put in here and then we say equal and then we say your chart element basically this here remember if chart element array number zero remember number zero why because if there's a length one the first value in the array is zero so if there is any zero in that case there's an if statement show pointer else if there's none, show default. And that's basically what we're doing here. And then we put in here a semicolon. So let me just make sure that this one is there. Yeah, there we are. So that was better. So now you can see here, everything works nicely. And if I just remove this or undo this, save that, refresh, we have here exactly the same design, but now we just trim it or refactor it into a single chunk of code or a single line of code. So that's basically the way to do it. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you haven't noticed my other video about how to create this clickable uh, bar chart with link, I would highly recommend it because these two are a perfect combination together.